All right, so you ever tried this technique? You you can hear it actually. I can hear it. I, it's like yeah. a seashell. <laughs> I used to do that with my wife. We go to dinner and the, 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 someone would bring over the wine. I didn't really care about it. I'm not going to do the whole, I'm not big on doing the whole right. smelling it. And so I would like plug my ear and, and, and hold up my, uh, my, plug my nose and hold the wine up to my ear and listen to it and look back at the waitress and be like, this is perfect. Thank you. And she'd be looking at me like. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. And joining the Fred Minnick Show, uh, a mutual middle name, first name yes, club. Yes, I was so, going to say, we're the, the Fred Club. Yeah, we're both. Yeah. So your my middle name is Frederick. Yes. Your middle name is Dirks. Yes. Your first name is Frederick. So together we're Fred... Fred Frederick. This is like Fred Frederick Frederick, Fred. Frederick <laughs> squared. Fred squared. I was gonna have a toast to, to the Freds, but yeah, <laughs> I got a. That was my, you know my mom and my whole family. Everyone got their used their middle name as their first name. So I've had people throughout my career ask me, is, is Dirks a stage name? Yeah, like, dude. If I was gonna pick a stage name, it wouldn't be Dirks. It'd be like <laughs> Buck, Buck Bentley. <laughs> yeah, sounds tough. I don't know. Dirks is a cool name, but I know you've talked about how people still misspell your name. All is the that, time. Does that still happen? All the time. I mean. Forget the S. Show up, I mean, back then you show up at a venue on the marquee sign, it's missing an E or, you know, spelled wrong and I always got a kick out of it. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of a weird name, so I don't, I don't, I'm not offended by it. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of country singers out there and as long as you're uh, saying it in some form or fashion that's getting the, spread the, spread the, the word about the music, I'm, I'm good. Well, we got your song playing right now. I know. <laughs> in your joint. We're, we're at Whiskey Row. We are. In downtown Nashville. Not the real Whiskey Row. Oh, Dirk's Bitley's That's Whiskey right. Row. Not Louisville Whiskey Row, but this is our Whiskey Row, which is a bar I started back in, uh, in Arizona, my hometown, in 2015, mm-hmm. based off Prescott Whiskey Row back in Arizona. But um, we are. We're here. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm, so, I'm super stoked to be here. I don't do a lot of podcasts. I don't really enjoy talking about myself. I don't find myself that interesting. Oh, no. Uh, and I've done, a, I've done one or two, and I, you know, I, I do them here and there. I actually love listening to podcasts. I'm kind of guilty of taking more than I give, I guess. But uh, I am super excited to be here with you. I really am. I've been counting all day. I've been, I'm like... In three hours, we'll be hanging out with Fred, drinking really good bourbon. In two hours, I'll be, and it's you know it's noon on a Thursday. How often do you get a chance to <laughs> do this? So well, yeah, I've cool. been I've been looking forward to it as well. We originally scheduled uh, for the CMAs, and I saw your schedule and my schedule yeah. change, and I've it felt it felt like a disingenuous time to like it would yeah. have been rushed, and it I didn't want to rush this. Because, and I had a show after that too. Yeah, ooh. a private show, so that would have been. I'm not sure what they would have gotten that night. I get I tend to get in trouble. When a musician has a, a, a show right after me, <laughs> and their their managers will come to me like, "What did you do to him?" Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Like, was, not- he was he was pouring his own drinks. He knows what he's doing. Oh. yeah. This is really fun, man. This is like a I'm I can't tell you how excited I am about this. So well, thank you. We brought you uh, some some great whiskey here, but Dirks, I'm telling you, I I have yet to compile my top 100 yeah. list, and these are all whiskeys I have yet to taste. Well, so I'm putting you to work here. I'm. I got. I've, 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 I have such respect for your palate. I've watched the way you work. I mean, when, you, when you're doing a tasting, it's almost like um, it's like a psychic, like bringing in, like trying to channel, you know, whatever <laughs> is out there. I, I watch you like you're moving your whole body. You're trying to figure it out. And you're like, it's it's coming in from here, and it's it's like I've, I've been a psychic before. I'm like, it's it's a lot like that. Like trying to you know translate something that's untranslatable into uh, a popper's ears. I my taste buds go between, uh, you know good and it's it's all good to me i think yeah. uh actually i was listening to a, a guy that who owns the uh the bourbon bistro jason oh jason yeah. Uh, bronner yeah. yeah i was listening to a thing he was talking about he said to him bourbon is it's all good there's just better bourbon so that's the way that's i look right. at my taste buds are not i don't have the palate but well I so have, jason jason's trying to sell bourbon yeah so he's still got to be friendly you know <laughs> well, you, I, <laughs> but don't you have a lot of friends like you got to critique something they're gonna be like hey fred uh thanks oh. a lot for saying the nose smells like plastic you know like you yeah. just cost us just happened account. it just happened yeah and it's awkward and sometimes you know you lose friends over it but um uh, at the same time like they you gotta do a, your job i, I, guess I like gotta a, do it's like a music critic you yeah. gotta you gotta like I got to be accurate. Yeah. Uh, but I also, I mean, it's like once, 
once a year I give like a really bad like you do. R- rip rip review like really bad one. Yeah. But most of the time they're pretty. It's kind of like I I I can it to um, you know school like mo you, you know a teacher has a class. Yeah. You know, most of them are C and above. Right. And she or he may have one or two people flunk. Yeah. You know, it's really the same. I, w- I would think it's like the music industry where anybody that has a record deal has to have a baseline, has, yeah. has had to pass enough tests and people and, and criteria to get to a certain level. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a matter of like, you know, good to great out there on the on the radio and on the road. But see, I see that's that's your world. But I don't I've, I've listened to some brilliant musicians who got record deals and just never went anywhere. Right. And it's like I have no idea how. Well, not commercial success, okay. but as far as like to your ears at good music or bad music it's like to get to that certain level it's got to be it's got to be basically pretty good and we you know i've heard a lot of your interviews and you know we were talking earlier about how george jones was an influence Mm. for you and you like you love 90s country music who are some of who are some of the people you like to uh compare yourself well i mean not while we're talking about bourbon and might as well talk about kentucky because all the great guys i love all come from kentucky a lot of them come from eastern kentucky like ricky skaggs and keith whitley of course, Chris Stapleton, more modern times. Uh, I just I love bluegrass music. Actually, I just played it. I'm playing a gig now just up the street every Tuesday night. The, every the first Tuesday of the month at the Station Inn, which is kind of the home of bluegrass music here. But uh, yeah, Keith Willie's right there at the top for sure. Um, 90s country. I mean, I love it all. 90s yeah. was such a fun time in, in music. Uh, the, the hair, the clothing, the songs, you know, the songs are so nowadays the songs are a little more focused i guess you'd say yeah back then you had such you know watermelon crawl you know songs that just (laughs) were were just fun and uh so i I love everything about the 90s but when i think of like great artists that really influenced me it's a lot of the guys that came from a bluegrass background that had uh, commercial country music success like skaggs or and keith whitley you just had a you just did a a feature with uh billy strings yeah so some nice picking in that yeah billy's awesome he's a bluegrasser from uh Michigan, a lot of great bluegrass up in that area, and uh, yeah, he's actually playing. We were just talking about Jelly Roll playing the, the Bridgestone. Billy Strings is doing two nights there, sold oh, out. Wow, that's a big deal for a guy from that. Uh, that's, that's that awesome. genre of music. So let's. My like, mouth is watering. I it's know. Hard to talk when you're looking at I this know. selection. I'll, I'll, I'll. Uh, I mean, especially this guy right here, but uh, I'll, I'll warm you up oh, with good. my with the barrel yes. pick. In my, he's like fine, great. Yeah, well, I'm excited about that one. You know. <laughs> so this is a barrel pick I did with um, uh, Elijah Craig. For my for my whiskey club, and um, I got I got a couple cases of these, and I started noticing the the bottles were disappearing. Yeah. And come to find out, my wife had been tearing these things up. Yeah, here, give me a glass here. Yeah. So one thing that you have done successfully that I don't think country music does well enough, Dirks, is you have done a good job including bourbon in your lyrics you got a song called bourbon in kentucky i do yeah and most people are singing about whiskey Whiskey. they're not doing the bourbon yeah Yeah. so i you know my first like here's the bottle there if you want to look at it but so my first toast is is to that song uh bourbon in kentucky bourbon in kentucky because it's a great song Mm. about getting over somebody sure is and uh you know Phonetically, people just don't use the word bourbon in songs. Well, I like that uh, you know that song. It's uh, God. All right, so yeah, I want to hear you talk about it. That's let's the best let's part. let's break this one down. Let's break it down. Now, this is this is my barrel pick. God, so this is so good. My mouth literally, <laughs> I'm swallowing down saliva. <laughs> it's like, I'm like it's coming out of my mouth. Ugh. So we are Ugh, we're, we're jumping God. into a um, we'll Elijah morning, Craig barrel morning, pick. Every morning just. What's Smell the proof that. on that? I can't remember. I think it's 118, 20. 126. 126. 128. Oh, yeah. okay. So I was, it was 128. So it smells. That thing happened where my you know, mid, mid to late 40s, my eyesight suddenly like failing me. It's like kind of a sad deal. Are you going to be able to handle the glasses? A lot I'm of people. Oh, yeah. People can't jump I'm to that. I'm going the glasses. My wife wears a pair. I think they look pretty sexy. <laughs> I've been wearing them a God, while. Damn, so that's good. caramel bomb. Okay. <sighs> yeah. So this is a big caramel bomb, uh, <laughs> but there's like some nutmeg in here too. Yeah. And what? And what and he said. I don't smell the nutmeg unless I isolate my nostrils. Like I smell it on my Except right nostril. Like, really? Yeah. Which is weird. 
because I tend to like smell yeah, you come up some crazy you come up some crazy you I, I heard you one time talking about something you had toasted uh, Kellogg frosted flake smell I mean how do you come up with a you said it smelled I, like toasted frosted flakes yeah, well you know, <laughs> I love that throw throw them I'm in like, the oven it smells good and you're you like know, there's some there's some desserts yeah. that are like that's they amazing have frosted your, your flakes in there. crazy you're gonna yeah I think it's also being able to describe things you know I'm it a is. writer yeah and, yeah you gotta and paint like, and so I can, I, I'm always thinking of descriptions. Exactly. And that's what it is. And it's true. I mean, it's, it's true. Once you hear that description, then you go back and smell it. You're like, I do, I do smell that, you know? What do you smell? Smell just glorious victory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. God. Mm. I can feel it right coming on all over my palate. <laughs> Curling up underneath, buttery. Mm. Mm. It's so hot, man. I'm literally, my mouth exploded. My whole tongue feels like it's been flat, like flat, scorched. Yeah, 128 proof mm. might do that to you if you're not ready. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable how uh, o- overpowering, you know. You feel, it, is there a flavor there coming to you? I think the second sip might be the one where I get the flavor. Because that first one just kind of like. You're getting acclimated. Yeah, exactly. You're getting acclimated to it. That first one just kind of scorched earth policy on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like whatever you've had in the last three days, well, you will not remember after I have that first sip. Because I'm going to go in there and just empty out your. Mmm. See, I wish I could describe that ta- that what I just tasted because it's so. Let's do this. Obvious, but what part of the tongue are you feeling it? Really in the back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that tends to be where a lot of people get spice. Yeah. Spice notes. Now it's different for everybody, but think about what's the what's the ma- mash bill? How much rye is in this? Uh, this would be like uh, in equal parts, close yeah. to equal parts rye and barley. It won't be. It's not a high rye. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a traditional mash yeah. bill. Fifteen percent or something. Yeah, uh, the the uh, proof is definitely going to uh, yeah give them cause more of that it, hot kind of yeah. spicy feel. Yeah. You want to add a little water to it? See if that yeah, changes so. it for you. That's the old fashioned technique of a little finger drop in there. I need to get my bourbon <clears throat> color wheel, but um, taste wheel. But how do you? I mean, it just. This I'm is like I'm representative of my fans, which are mostly like me, Bush Light beer drinkers. That's kind of where my wheelhouse is of like <laughs> what I normally drink. So to me, it just tastes like I, it's just most wonderful. Like it's just so there's so much going on there. It's unbelievable. It all comes from you know. So the when, the when we're when we're tasting, and this is the technique that I learned. Um, you know, I come home from my rack. I'm in therapy. Yeah, I know uh, I, all that. The, it, the, the quarter and the potato chips. Yeah, yeah. And I was unbelievable. Uh, um, and the the taste mindfulness technique, it just connecting yeah. your palate to your brain. Yeah, that is, that was the moment for me when I started really understanding what I was tasting. And not to interrupt that story, but yeah, you start with a quarter, right? Just feeling the edges of it and feeling the grooves and yeah, and c- focusing on that, and then you move to potato chips and really close your eyes and focus on exactly yep. what you're tasting exactly i mean it's fascinating and i it's you know it's like when i when i produce when i make records you know we were talking about jesse alexander earlier great artist great songwriter her husband john randall is a good buddy of mine he'd be so jealous right now um you know he i have to bring him into the studio because he has a way of hearing stuff that's beyond my pay grade and he can talk to the musicians and be like hey this is what we need to do here right yeah Remember that, that record that Sam Bush played on in 1975 with Amy Lou Harris? And he did that cool thing on the, on the slide mandolin that made that weird overtone. Yeah, like, you know, he just has a way of, like, circling it around where I'm like, uh, play, you know, <laughs> I can't speak that language. And it's the same here. I'm a student of it. I'm, I'm you know, just like I'm a student of country music, I'm always trying to learn more. You never stop being a student. I'm here to, you know, I'm, I'm learning about uh, developing those, those tastes, but they're not there yet. So, what well, the... The the whisperer. I can tell you, I feel really well, warm and fuzzy. That's good. <laughs> the the 
the whisperer to your palate is you. Yeah. In, in your memories, right? Yeah. And so when you taste it, think about when you taste anything, think about how your tongue feels when you're tasting that. Yeah. And then apply that when you are tasting anything, a spirit. It's like just think yeah. about why you're tasting, whether it's like, you know, you know, something here like, you know, we have um, we have awesome sliders here set up by your kitchen. Yes. Um, you know, you got spicy, you got savory, you've got um, you probably got a little sweetness in there with a, I think there's a like a, a caramelized onion in there. Yeah, that could be sweet. You know, think about where that like feels on the tongue and you can apply that to what you when you're tasting alcohol. Yeah. And that will trigger. Yeah. A memory right. of it. And often it'll be connected to your to your childhood. It'll be connected wow. to like when you're growing up. Yeah. Because that's when we we really absorb our yeah. taste memories. Yeah. It's from that time frame. Yeah. And also, if, if you think about it, people won't drink tequila because they had a bad night with tequila. That's, that's, it's just, that's it's, why I stopped drinking scotch. I had a bad night in eighth grade, and I never drank scotch ever again. Connected. <laughs> it's absolutely connected. It, it's a memory. Scotch reminds me of being hungover, throwing up my dad, making me mow the yard, and throwing up even more. <laughs> and I was like, scotch is out. I honestly have not drank it since eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, so, uh, that's tough right yeah. there. <laughs> Anyway, it's a tough love. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't bring any of my no, like 25 year old. No, no, uh, too fancy LeFroy. for me. My, no, no, too, that's too. That's too fancy for me. So, uh, so next time you're tasting, be thinking about what you've had in your past, what it can possibly remind you of. Yeah, and cool. apply that. And so, in the right. back of the palate is where we get. So, the tip of the palate. This is different for everybody, but for me, I've been able to kind of like, you know, say that this is where I feel these particular yeah. types of flavors. <clears throat> Sweet notes on the tip, savory on the middle, bitterness in the middle toward the back. There's a little line there, and then also on the sides. So when you're, you know, Fred No talks about the Kentucky Chew. Do you do right. the whole like? Do you do you bring it in a certain way? Yeah. So the Kentucky Chew is like when you put it on your lips and you go. Yeah. I always when I do that in public, I feel ridiculous. <laughs> so, so I don't do it. But the method is the is is accurate and like you want to get it all over your tongue. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to do that. You can like smack your lips around. You can push it around the roof of your palate. Yeah. Or you can just like the whiskey, which is what I do, kind of like naturally Slowly go back. Go back, yeah. That's kind of what so I do. Drink, put it in here first and let it fall. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Like that's. Front and, of your mouth uh, first. Um, uh, but that's that's what I prefer to do because yeah. I just feel ridiculous doing the yeah. Kentucky yeah. Chew. All right. Well, I, so I, you're giving me this bottle. That's yours. Which is unbelievable. Which though yeah. I need to get an autograph on that before we leave. Oh, but, absolutely. Uh, um, I'll just leave this and I here. usually bring books and all that, that, but that's for the next time. You know, we're gonna be meeting up again here soon. Well, you gotta I wait. You. It. I'm gonna get my little oh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You should read this book. It's really helpful if you want to learn more about bourbon. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, I, the it's thing is, bourbon, the rise, fall, and rebirth of American whiskey. And uh, did you throw that in the it tractor? Did, it really or something? helped you a lot if you want to check that one out. No I'm kidding. <laughs> that's Fred's book, y'all. Wow. And uh, I love that's it. Awesome, yeah, it's been man. a great. It's been a great book. It's um. It's, I love that. Yeah, you know, I feel like I've been a, I'm not really a baseball guy, but I, I've been a player my whole life. You know, I've been on the field. I've been drinking. I've been. I started drinking too soon in high school, and uh, yeah. and I drank Jim Beam because of Hank Jr. Hank Jr. loved Jim Beam, so I love Jim Beam. I used yeah. to save the bottles and put them on the wall, and I've drank so much bourbon over the course of my life. But now in this area of my life, kind of coming mature and coming back into it, I'm just more interested in like the history of it. It's fun. This was not fun when I was 18. Right. 18, right. I was like, put it in, in with a Coke and let's get it in the liver as quickly as possible. Now I'm like, I find this stuff fascinating. So your book and, and connecting it all back to the history of our country. And wow. I mean, you could do a whole, you can, it, it really ties into the, the history of our, our country. It's all, yeah. it, it follows, bourbon, the story of bourbon kind of falls along the taxation, the wars, prohibition, yeah. you know, consumerism. It's all kind of tied together. It's so all right there. I need you to sign that before we leave along this sweet new bottle of a... Absolutely. Who is the, uh, the the father of bourbon? Well... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, that, that shows you actually read my book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, yeah. Don't don't talk about that or vodka around Fred, folks. You're going to get a <laughs> hand slapped. So. <laughs> all right. Shall we go to the next yeah. taste here? Let's do it. Um, so I'm going to do this based pick the next one based on yeah, proof. I'm excited about this. I will always admit my ignorance. I've, I've never heard of uh, Penelope. So Yeah, Penelope is a, Penelope. Is a new brand. Okay. Um, these guys, uh, they're from New Jersey. Okay, and, cool. Uh, but they're big uh, they're chefs and big bourbon fans. And so they started this brand, named it 
after uh, the dude's daughter. daughter. Yeah, I looked and, that up. Um, so this is their one of their new releases. It's a four grain barrel strength batch. What's your opinion 18. on four grain in general? Uh, I love four grain uh, when it hits. It. Like they don't always hit. Right. Seems lighter, visual like just. Yeah, so this is going to be four or five years old. Yeah. Definitely grainy. Wow. Yeah, so on the nose, again, I'm not using the correct, my, I have a limited, you know, vocabulary for my pal, but definitely not as like, it's not as exploding my nostrils like yeah. Elijah Craig did. Much subtler. All right, so. You ever tried this technique? You, you can hear it, actually. I can hear it. I, it's like uh, a seashell. <laughs> I used to do that with my wife. We go to dinner and the, 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 someone would bring over the wine. I didn't really care about it. I'm not going to do the whole, I'm not big on doing the whole right. smelling it. And so I would like plug my ear and, and, and hold up my, uh, my, plug my nose and hold the wine up to my ear and listen to it and look back at the waitress and be like, this is perfect. Thank you. And she'd be looking at me like, he's testing it through listening to it? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is great. It Fred. does sound. It, oh, it, it sounds it yeah. sounds like it was made on a <laughs> cold, cold November day <laughs> with a hint of uh, clover Rain. in the air. Yeah, it's clover. A little bit of peppermint, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, it smells great. Ooh. A little cinnamon there for me. I do smell I do taste that cinnamon. No, much smoother. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but that's just because the, you know. It's, it's, what's, it's the, what's the proof on this? 118. So it's similar. I mean, it's up there yeah. still. But just. Do you like cinnamon? What do you, what's your favorite cinnamon dish? Does a cinnamon roll count? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> if, if I could have a Cinnamon on my, uh, my coffee? And, no, I don't. I'm a, oh, black, I, I'm a black coffee drinker. But, same. Uh, yeah. Only black. Nothing else. Yeah, I feel like if you're adding sugar and you're, that's the whole point you're, is like you're, you're covering up all the all the good stuff. I actually funny, speaking of that, my dad caught me drinking uh, Jim Beam and Coke and, or Jack and Coke, whatever it was in high school. And instead of, instead of reprimanding me, he said, "That's a starter's drink." That's <laughs> what he means. Like you don't need to be adding Coke to your whiskey. He's that's what rookies do. I'm like wow, thanks, Dad, for the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> steering me the right way there, but he's true about that. But I, now, I, your, your dad passed away 2012. Yeah, about 10 years ago. Yeah. And my he, dad was, uh, would have been nine, let's see, he was born in 1923, fought in World War II. Yeah. I mean, just a member of that whole greatest generation. He had me in his 50s. My wife, my, his wife and him were 20 years apart. Um, his first wife had passed away from cancer. And, uh, but yeah, and he actually, my brother's 10 years younger than me than me so he was 60 and my mom was 40 when my brother was born wow. so I had an older dad but uh, just the greatest of all time such a great guy and, and um, he wasn't a you know he enjoyed drinking but not a huge drinker but his approach to it which is the same approach I take with my kids is let's talk about it you know yeah. let's, let's not let's you know let's let's be open about it so you you enjoyed a bourbon with him oh yeah and a lot of beers a lot of beers he, call, he called a beer a good idea oh. Dirks what do you say we have a good idea yeah dad let's Let's have a. That sounds like a good idea. I like that. <laughs> I like. But that. not a big, not a you know big big bourbon guy. But he was in banking, right? He was, yeah. Yeah. In the fun years of uh, the '70s and '80s, when '60s and '70s really were the stock market was pretty flat. Well, he did not make a lot of money in banking. He was in the stock. He was a stockbroker, but back when stock brokerage was more institutionalized banking, not the not the Robin Hood of today, but. Just a great guy. We could talk about all, all day long. I'm not sure yeah. about your dad, but um, it's my dad's still with me. Uh, they had me on the opposite God, side. He was 17. Wow. Yeah, he was 17 when I was born. Um, and um, you know, he works for the FAA, and they study crashes. Yeah, I love so, that. I mean, I don't so, like that, but I'm, I'm a pilot. I'm a pilot myself. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah, yeah. What do you fly? I fly for fun. I have a caravan. Uh, but I have a, a sponsorship with Cessna, and I'm typed in a, a CJ4, which is a oh wow, rather large, a, a larger. Jet so you got a you got a side hustle. Of, I do. Uh, I fly my band everywhere. I'm the only artist in this town that flies his band personally, you know, in and out of gigs. That is um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love I love aviation, and I study those crashes all the time. So. Yeah. So they he's in a, at the Mike Monroney 
Institute there okay. in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And if you go there, I'd love to set you up with a uh, tour. I'd love to. They have all of these, um, all these old planes, and people from all over aviation, from all over uh, industries, will come and just like look at it and like the bolt was missing. Like putting, the, they put the planes back together there. Yeah. The crash so, site. Well, oh, they'll they'll have the actual site reconstructed. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. And, yeah. And then they will point to. That's uh, what caused it. Yeah. Wow. And then Dad's unit uh, studies the the actual um, seat during a crash test so they will hire people to come in okay and they will simulate a I've crash. got to meet your dad this yeah. is fascinating I'm actually my, my drummer is flying right now because I, I paid for his private pilot's license 10 years ago and now he's getting his IFR so this he's the only person in town that's loving this weather I'm like every day I wake up I'm like you're the only guy excited that it's like low clouds yeah. rain <laughs> and not turbulent and so he and I geek out about flying, but um, so they they leave some of those planes there for students to study, or is it always yeah. new new stuff coming well, in? Well, no, they'll they'll rotate stuff yeah, in, wow. and it's a lot of a uh, uh, lot of like crop dusters, things yeah, like yeah. that. But all right, back to back to back to bourbon, y'all. I know that could be plane next, crashes. Country song, back yeah. to bourbon. Back to bourbon. <laughs> love it. Let's write it. I, I'm in. All right, I would love to write right. a song with you. Okay. I just have to be okay. in the room. I, just, I don't have to actually do anything. I just sniffed the microphone. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've done that on stage Kinda before where rubbery. I have a beer in my hand and a, and a mic and I go to sing in the beer can and you know I've had a few drinks yeah but uh okay let's sniff this <laughs> well my early grade on the Penelope mm. is cinnamon forward kind of cinnamon red hot almost like that tamale okay um and then after that some like hatch chili and then some red chili. It was very spicy to me, but doesn't have any of the sweet characteristics. I also, it smells like grain, but I'm not tasting any of the grains on the palate. Yeah. So I'm, I'm impressed with this. That's funny, because I was going to say the exact same thing. You just beat me to it. But yeah, I was going to say <laughs> I was gonna say more of a green chili, but I, can, I, can, I guess I can go with the red. I guess it's a little red, a little dark red. Well, you're an Arizona boy. You all. Yeah, I love you, spice. I love hot sauce. You grew up around I want to get chili. some of your hot sauce, because we, I, I've been putting, my kids, since they're toddlers, I'd always put a little hot sauce in their oh, whatever nice. they're eating, you know, in their Gerber's, just to get them kind of get them acclimated to that spice. Um, so we love hot sauce in our yeah, house. Yeah, don't do that with bourbon. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going now. We're going to go to. Oh, this is 132 proof. I'm not wow. going to do that to you. We're going to jump to. Let's see what yeah. we have here. This is 115 proof. Is this the Parker? That's the Parkers. Yeah. 132. That is packing some heat. God, All right, so brought, we're gonna go to brought the you did bring the heat, and I gotta be honest again. I, yeah, but was that? This is uh, this is made in. I brought you two Colorado yeah, products. Yeah, oh, that's the Leopold Brothers. I saw you the the, the two nine one. I know about them. I don't know about Leopold Brothers. Leopold Brothers. Uh, yeah. they're out of Colorado. How do you? Uh, they do a three I mean, chambered. You, how do you feel about that? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, being good. a you know the Colorado stuff versus. Uh, I well, I think it's really Colorado is a great state for whiskey. It's my favorite state in the country. I did love Colorado. Yeah, uh, you got stuck there, didn't you? During the uh, pandemic? I got I was yeah stuck and never wanted to get unstuck. I love Colorado. I'm headed out there in a week. Um, great friends, great people, uh, and yeah, it was, we went out there for you know for spring break, and we have a pl fortunate enough to have a place out there in, um, in the mountains. And, and you've uh, got a you've got a joint in Denver. And I got a, one of these bars in Denver. Yeah. yeah. Grab you some of your glass there. Yeah, you know, I was a little, a little worried about you know Fred walking into the bar and uh, looking to see us back behind the bar. This being called Whiskey Row, but I'm gonna, we're gonna set things up after. Hey man, whatever I can do to I'd help. I'd love to talk to you about getting a quality or more quality selection. We got some Basil Haydens and stuff back there, but we need to kind of, you know, it's it's an interesting place to be because a lot of the folks come in here aren't. This is not a place you come to. Yeah. Sit down and and really do tasting. Yeah. You come in here to, to party. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know, like... Um, I'd like to create an offshoot of this. Yeah. You know, more of a tasting environment. So what are the... What are the one of the conundrums I live in is, like, I will I will do something. Like, I, I have events where I have three to 600 people up. Yeah. That's blind bourbon. I got a stage. I'm, I'm Cole I'm Hauser, is that people. your thing, or is that... A yeah, Cole, Cole... Well, that was different. Cole did a... We did an event together. Oh, that's that for veterans. Yeah. Yeah. We did an event together last yeah, week, I and then he was that. on my podcast. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't see the podcast, but I saw the little event you did. Yeah. 
outside somewhere. And that yeah. was a it was it was secret. Like they didn't tell anyone because one they didn't want paparazzi coming. Right, right. And two, Trump was doing an event there the next day. And where was it? This was in Naples, Florida. Florida, in Florida yeah, yeah. at an yeah. uh, uh, airplane hangar. Oh, cool. One That's of the, the way Trump does it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Whoa, this is totally different. So this is a rye whiskey. Okay, well, that but explains it. But it's made, it's a bottled and bond. So bottled okay. and bond goes back to 1897. Four years minimum. Yep. Same, one distillery, same season. My God, I love this. This man reads. His, <laughs> he reads. I found a book, y'all. <laughs> that a lot. No, I and uh, that's a uh, E.H. Taylor, right? He's a big part of the making. He that was happen. a big part of that. Yeah, yeah. And Three Chamber is a really an old-fashioned uh, style still. of a still yeah. that Leopold Brothers brought back, and they're making rye whiskey out of it. Rye, awesome. of course, is a different category than bourbon. The first time I really got turned on to rye whiskey was a band um, called the Punch Brothers. They're a bluegrass oh, band, yeah. Chris Thiele, and we we're up in Brooklyn making a record in 2010, and. Uh, they're all about rye whiskey. Actually, they have a song called Rye Whiskey. And we went to a bar called uh, Milk and Honey up there and all the rye cocktails. One of the greatest yeah. bars it was in the world. Of, it was such a fun night. Yeah. Those guys were, they were just so so fun. And such great guys. Such a fun time in my life. But uh, cool. Definitely uh, so this ma- is major curveball from where we just were. So It is. But that is the uh, that is the life of reviewing whiskey. Yeah. Which you are now in that seat. So this is different. I saw some more. You said you get you get about a hundred thousand bottles that have been, or, you know. Uh, pres- oh, in my career, what do you call yeah. that people have been giving you like little yeah, samplers. I get thousands of those, thousands. Yeah, not probably in my career about a hundred thousand yeah. if you include wine, but Just toss them out. You're done. Um, sometimes um, so I give give a lot of them away. I've got the ones that have been in competition. I put them in storage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. the the nose on this, yeah, is like a Christmas tree with Play-Doh. Okay, I smell the, the with Play-Doh. Yeah, the Play-Doh. Play-Doh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I smell that. It's got like a Play-Doh nose on it, which brings back a lot of memories. My mom used to hand make Play-Doh. I hope it doesn't taste like Play-Doh. I hope it doesn't either. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten it before. Unfortunately, me too. God, my mom used to make me eat soap when I said a bad word. Hopefully nothing tastes like soap here and brings back a lot of childhood trauma. <laughs> God. She's going to listen to this, you know. <laughs> she probably will. Love you, Mom. Rye is such a specific like taste for me that I'm not a huge fan of drinking it neat. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge cocktail guy either, so I'm not sure. Me either. Um, how I would enjoy, would totally appreciate this. This is um, style, but this is like black licorice, like really black licorice anise tasting. This is an old school style of yeah. Rye. This is really yeah. old school. Like in the twenties, this is the kind of rye they were drinking. Yeah, it's very like vegetal. Uh, yeah. It's got uh, a lot of herbs to it, but the black licorice note is is amazing. And then, you know, I'm also going to call Jordan Davis up and say, "Hey, there's some dirt in this." <laughs> you Jordan know? Davis, I love you, Jordan. Yeah, he's a bit, he's been on the show. Yes, we're yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you more about Jordan after, uh, after after this is over. But he's a good buddy of mine. And we got some plans that we're working on. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, I I'll, so uh, this you and I be a great tasting team because you can give all like the actual like real palate flavors, <laughs> and I can be like. Just the real world for me with this would be like I don't think I'm quite at the level to totally appreciate this this uh, beautiful. It's a like it or don't like it. These guys. Oh, I do like it. I just feel like it's, it's you know rye is just a, a little more of an acquired taste for a guy that's just been a Jim Beam guy through and through his whole life. So, well, I mean, it just smells so different than uh. You have to, and also, this is so like. I can feel it on my tongue, like so much of the oils and fatty acids are just. Yeah, I, this I, I this that. has got it's it's deep. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but you know, from a flavor perspective, breaking this down. See, the second the second one was like, is there any the second sip sometimes give you a little bit more of a. You get so your palate gets like the first one is just like it's like a warm up run. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like sometimes the second sip for me is the one where I really get the most like. 
appreciation in some way or ability to really taste what's going on. Unless like myself and uh, and my colleagues, our first sip is often actually our second sip, you know. Okay. So we will, and we're always ready to go. You know, our palates are always acclimated. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, you're professional. It's what what we do. It's kind of like you like singing. Yeah. You're warmed up already if you had to be. But I, I, yeah, I don't even, I don't warm up before I walk on stage. Oh, I love that. I don't do anything. I don't go back and I mean, I'll have a shot of something sometimes, but I don't go will out. You, I'm not doing vocal on? warm-ups. I'm not doing all. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've been talking so much with the band, laughing at the band. Usually we're picking someone on the, on the bus and you're playing songs that I'm like, my voice is, it's, it is what it is. It's ready to go. Yeah. You know? And sometimes that first note you're singing, it, you're, that's some of your best sounds because your voice is so like raw. It's like you're getting like, right. the, like the first taste, you know, it's like, wow. Do you happen to have a, um, uh, a favorite thing you like to bring on stage to drink? Well, I am an authentic person, and I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the truth. I drink, you know, one of the reasons I kind of quit drinking a lot on stage is I was drinking Red Bull and vodka. Oh, for I God's know. sake. I'm sorry. I, we thought, just when we thought we were going to be friends, but <laughs> if we want to have a real friendship, sometimes you got to tell your friend the truth yeah. and uh, hurt his feelings. But, you know, out in the road, I, I, I could do a whole history of drinking related to my career, but I, um, I was a t- bourbon guy through and through. I started touring with Kenny Chesney. Ke- Chesney, all he drinks is sugar-free Red Bull and rum, right? And so you start hanging out with him. You're smelling that. It smells like summer. You know, I can get, I know yeah. what that smells like. Yeah. Sugar free Red Bull and rum smells like a Kenny Chesney tour. And it's a lot of fun. And so you just get hooked on drinking that. And then I decided it's like, there's so much sugar in that. I was like, I need to clean it up. So I started drinking. I was like, I'm just going to drink vodka and, and uh, like a soda. Because that's a cleaner drink, right? But you get hooked on that Red Bull. The Red Bull is like Coke. You know, it's like you've got to have it to get on stage. So I got a number of years. I, you know, I drink six of those a night just to kind of either get back picked back up in the, the mode mm-hmm. or to keep the energy through the show and i hated being dependent on anything so i i cut all that stuff out and now um when i'm on stage it's it's usually just uh it's you know there's some tequila involved sometimes it's uh you know bourbon's usually a post show okay bourbon, bourbon just kind of makes me feel happy and like relaxed relaxed yeah. and it's a conversational drink when right. you're on stage it's like guns you got you know guns blaring and you got you're mm-hmm. not, you're not fighting your crowd but you are i'm there to like get a win of some sort it's it's combat not like combat you've been well, through sure, but like sure. it's like my crowds it's like sometimes i have to remind myself they paid money to come see you like they're already on your side yeah. but i feel like i have to get the win so i'm out there like i need to be like in a certain mentality and it's not i don't lean on alcohol for that well, it, i had that internally and built it within my my dna but i it, sometimes something that kind of bites a little bit in that way helps and one of the things too, you know, with you, you're very uh, vocal about being present. Yes. In, in the moment, so, like, I can imagine that you being on stage is is that kind of like actualization of just being present. You know. It is, and I mean, yeah. To be, t- and I was listening to, to, to your interview with uh, our buddy Clay Walker, who I love, and I discovered in that show that Clay doesn't drink at all during his show, which you yeah. know, and uh, you know, for, you know, total transparency, I quit drinking for a while during during my shows because I wanted to, I didn't want to have that crutch of like I need something to help me do this it's like you're on stage living out your dream mm-hmm. they're all here for you this is the does this do I need something to make this any better than it already is and if right. I do then I have a problem because this is everything and also I don't want to take the edge off I want to feel that fear I want to feel that self-consciousness I want to feel every bit of what this moment is so I can find a way to take that and turn it into energy that I can throw back out at the, at the fans so I don't really drink on stage um, like I used to. So this is my stage. Yeah. And here we are. Oh, this God. is the uh, this is hard truth sweet mash rye uh, batch uh, three. And this was last sweet year. Sweet mash. All right. Yeah. So no uh, no backfill on this one. That's right. And last year Kinda like this a wilderness trail. Exactly. And last year, this brand uh, made my top 100. So let's see if they can do it two years in wow. a row. God, it smells so good. And where's this made? Indiana. Ooh. And the proof it, on it's 115. Is it, uh, is it MGP or is it they? they no, they, they distill it. Okay. Yeah, they make it themselves. God, it smells so good. You hate to even like ruin that with the sip. It does. It like, smells beautiful. Once you sip it, it's a whole other game. But. It smells, like pe- smells like peppermint and chocolate. I was gonna say it smells like Christmas. So that's a good start, yeah. right? Because yeah. those are those are 
Peppermint and, cri- and That's chocolate. That's are Christmas. associated with Christmas. There you go. I'm learning, folks. Watch out, Fred Minnick. Oh, damn. Really? It is like Christmas. Like, kind of delay, a little delay gratif- gratification of waiting to have that first sip. Wow. Mm. Damn, boys, you did it again. Damn. That's way more forward on my tongue. That's purdy. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of the mint thing is big, right? Yeah. There's a big. I can't imagine it would be like to be, be inside your now. what it your head uh, on, a, on swallowing this. So I've, always, I've always wished I could be I could play a guitar like Eddie Van Halen for like just one minute. <laughs> what would it be? What would it be like to look down a guitar neck and have it the key unlocked where it all makes sense? You're like. Because I look at a guitar neck and it's it's there's nothing there's it doesn't make any sense at all right I know how to do stuff on it but I can't like and my I have a guy in my band named Ben Helson who can just like up and down the neck I'm like if I could just be Eddie Van Halen for like a minute but I can't imagine for you what you what's going on there when you taste something I'm just I when I I'm thinking like the minute yeah. I smell it the minute it hits my tongue um, as long as I'm in a state to think. You, you know, go into psychic mode. Uh, yeah, there, I am just. You're channeling voices. Compl- you're channeling. I'm trying memories. To, you're channeling exact, memories. Yeah. I'm channeling memories. Yeah, that's what you're doing. And I get a, uh, I get that peppermint patty here, like a, yeah, like a nice on this palate. It's a peppermint patty. Isn't that I, a commercial with the ski jumper? Uh, the uh, yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh. Yeah. I don't really eat those anymore, but they were no. always in the checkout line at my Chinese place that I would go to. Maybe that's my problem. My mom never let me have any sweets. It was like. The shredded wheat biscuit for breakfast. That not the small, not even the small uh, shredded wheats. The big biscuit. Yeah. With you know skim milk, no ice cream, no sprites. Well, see, you know, my you, kids are gonna have great palates because they you, eat ice cream every you, day. You you have a nice slender body. This is the this is the uh, payment of having uh, uh, all the sweets and uh, <laughs> whiskey taste in there. The nice rotundness. Well. Hmm. <laughs> That's damn good. I think that's definitely going to make my top 100. Any celebrity brands in your top 100? Uh, there have been. Really? Uh, last year, uh, Terry Bradshaw's made it. Really? Um, and uh, this year, there will be one. Cool. I know of one for sure, certain. But, uh, wow, look at that. I didn't think I was going to Oh, whoa, one. whoa, whoa, whoa. We're doing it? Well, We're I doing was, it. I was going to... It's time. Folks, it's just, just so you're, you're not watching, if you're just listening, where he just cracked the seal on a Mitcher's uh, 20 year old. <laughs> which is, uh, just go on, go on Google right now and type in Mitcher's 20 year old and see what it, what it costs. Um, hint, it's five numbers. So, a little history for you on this brand. This was originally uh, a Pennsylvania brand. Do you ever use food to cleanse the palate or no? Uh, does it, does I it mess do. you up? Does it mess I you do. up at all or no? Uh, uh, I'm I saying, what's the best thing to do before I, we have this? Should I just stay where I'm at? Drink a little water. Drink have, definitely drink some water. Okay, if wanna, you uh, let, let's go ahead, yeah, let's have a. I want to come into this one with the best chance to really yeah, experience let's, it. We can uh, we can eat some. I'll go ahead and pour you and let it open up a little mm. bit. But yeah, let's eat a yeah. let's eat a little something. There you oh go. yeah, I think this is gonna help. So basically. Yeah, there's a couple couple aspects to uh, to eating something before you know we're cleansing. Normally, I would have a there's a whole routine to it, but it's you know what the hell a slider yeah. will do. And, so and let's talk about Mitchers while we're because the history of this company's pretty interesting, right? Started off in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and what? Oh God, what are you no food. No. <laughs> So, Passed through a lot of hands. The guy from New York bought the brand. And th- they acquired a lot of old stock in 2000. Or, but, yeah, yeah, so in um, in the – so Michter's goes out of business in the late 1980s. Yeah. It was acquired by uh, Chatham Imports. They acquired the trademarks. And they started bottling it with Kentucky whiskey. And that was hugely controversial right. at the time. And the Pennsylvania whiskey community, you know, was really upset behind it. 
and um, but over time this brand and even I like you know I wrote a lot of things on it in the, back in the day but this brand like under like new ownership and everything they've really paid tribute to the origins of Michter's which Michter's was named after the founders two Michael kids Michael and Peter Michael and Peter yeah so we went back and like re-engineered <clears throat> the recipe or something you bring yeah. one of those chicken ones so I'm gonna eat this this is good Thanks, dude. Yeah, we're, I gotta promote the food. Whiskey Row, you come to Nashville, y'all. Get yourself a slider. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> he comes up, um, he starts, um, you know, bottling other people's whiskey and then starts contract distilling and then they start their own distillery or build their own distillery. And when they built their own distillery, they had all of these like little little issues like they had to move like an auger like an inch or something uh they had uh, they had an issue with one of their uh with their visitor center and they had like all of these like hurdles thrown at them and they just overcame them and keep kept overcoming them and they've been very true to their brand of being like a super premium i'm always on them about disclosing their mash bill and telling yeah. more and it's like a fun back and forth you know, when I have them on camera or when I'm at an event with them, I'm like, hey, um, you know, what's your mash bill again? You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I do all these little things yeah. like that to try and try and get it. I'll tell you, as a, as a younger fan of, uh, you know, newer fan of bourbon, actually the history of it and the knowledge behind it, I do like what BBC does with their little label on the side of their discovery. Yeah. Where you can actually see not only the mash bill, but where it came from. Indiana, Kentucky. Right. I mean, it's not much, but it's just like, it's better than looking at a bottle and reading a bunch of bullshit. Like, you know, uh, you know. The finest grains and the fermented water. It's like, okay, everyone's using that, but... Right. Or filtered water, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, like, just to see where... A little more information like that is kind of fun, but anyway. It's true. <coughs> I think half that burger got stuck in my sorry. throat. Well, I just had some hot chicken, so we'll see how this goes down with the, the I gotta, spice. I gotta, I gotta wash it down with... Yeah. Second one there. What was that, the second one? That was the second one Penelope's? for me. I'm doing what you're doing. Whatever you do, I'm going to do. Yeah, so now just um, cleanse your palate out. And I want to ask you, too, why, why uh, at some point, why there was so much readily available old stock in the 2000s in that area? Why are people, there was just no appreciation for 10 year old Oh, boy. Great you know, question. You know, why? So, in the, 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 the rise of vodka was the fall of bourbon. That's, right. that's one of my right. saying. 1976, vodka, sucks. vodka took over it, bourbon. It sales. just did. It started spiraling downhill, yeah. and all the distilleries were beginning to sell or get out of the business. Or lighter spirits. Yeah, they, but they were finding ways to, there were people who Lowering were- Lowering the proof, yeah. Yeah, they were finding ways to stay involved. And uh, Japan and Australia got very excited about bourbon in the late 80s and early 90s. And so everyone started shifting their efforts toward Japan. And Rebel Yale, which was a weeded bourbon- yeah. Um, made at uh, Stitzel Weller, yeah. uh, increased uh, production by I think like 400 percent just to focus on Australia and Japan. Uh, Australia changed their tax their tax structure, and then uh, Japan went their their markets crashed. Yeah, and so they had a one two punch, and the company uh, now called Diageo, then United Distillers, yeah. had all of this uh, stock yeah. of uh, weeded bourbon uh, from the early 1990s. Yeah. And so they put it all out on the market. And at that time, there was new blood getting in the game. And uh, Julian Van Winkle was right, right. resurrecting his father's, Happies, yeah. his, his grandfather's name. And so all these people were buying up this Stitzel Weller yeah. uh, whiskey that was meant for Australia and Japan. Meanwhile, United Distillers was like, we're getting out of the uh, yeah, American whiskey game and yeah, focusing yeah. on Crown Royal and Johnny Walker. Mm. And... Um, so they sell off their brands like uh, Old Fitzgerald yeah. and Weller. Uh, they sell their plant Bernheim to Heaven Hill. Mm -hmm. And so you had all this new blood in there. And you had all these people who cared about bourbon starting to, uh, you know, sell it and push yeah. it. Yeah. This was in the early 2000s. Yeah. And in the early 2000s is when we all started getting access to the Internet. And that was the beginning of... Oh. You know, before there was uh, so true. Before there was Facebook yeah. and all these other things, you had uh, social groups 
uh, and forums dedicated to bourbon. And so you had people communicating from Hawaii to people in Georgia and Japan to Florida. And it was like the consumers uh, the started building. Yeah. yeah, they started building all this. And there was whiskey magazines coming out. And uh, it, it just, it, it was a, it began to like build and build and build. And now where we are, you know, we are, are probably in about year 10 of when bourbon uh, bourbons return and bourbons yeah. come back. So we probably got about another 20 years. Another 30 year cycle. Yeah, of this of this growth. Yeah. However, there's always things that can, you know, there's always sure. warning signs. Yeah. You know, there's always things that can say you can say like yeah, it's going to go to shit quick now, yeah. you know. But like there's so many brands on the shelf. There are a lot out there. There's a lot out there and there's not a lot of those out there. I know. So well, should we take a sip? Let's go through the process. Let's do it. Nose. You rinsed your palate out with I water? Did. I'm good. All right. I'm so excited for this first sip. Wow. First nose, rather. I mean, can I say it's like well rounded? Like it's not killing me, but it's like still really intense. That's not really a description. A That's more of a feeling. I'm more of a feeling. You know, I'm a musician. Well, I feel things. I can't describe them in words. I and put the them musician in. downstairs is giving the feels right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. It's perfect time, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I told him to do that. Yeah, he's got bar. the... I said, hey, play something with a little heart to it. <laughs> <laughs> God, it just, it's... Okay, I, I, this is me just trying to make sh shit up after having a few drinks, but it feels intense but smooth. Like, as far as the smell goes... It's pretty powerful. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's be yeah, this is all, those aren't really description, descriptive words, though. That all right, here we I'm, go. All right. We're on the palate. <laughs> it's a mouthful of just... You would never want to put any ice in this because it just, you don't want to dilute that at all. It is just, that is like a box that keeps unfolding and unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And there's just so much happening there. I wish I could put the words to what that taste is. That's why people tune into your show. It's a good thing I can't. <laughs> or regular people can't because then they'd have no reason to do a review. It is really fun doing this with you because, like, if you go Kicks Brooks from Brooks and Dunn, he has a winery here in town, you know, Arlington, and I've been out there, and I've hung with Kicks a lot. He's a good pal. And it's fun drinking wine with him because he speaks the language, and there is more enjoyment out of it when you're hearing right. someone describe what you're, what you're tasting. Well. Sometimes a moment of silence is probably the most appropriate thing, huh? This is, um, this is a bourbon to be with your thoughts. Mm. You know, yeah. It's there's perfect weather out there for it too. It right? is, yeah. It it's is perfect. Raining weather. here all in Nashville. Gray skies for a week now. And I, I, I love the rain when I'm indoors. Yeah. I hate it when I'm walking to my car or something like that. This week has forced me to be to get a lot of stuff done because I'm like yeah. I can't. I usually am outside hiking, biking, doing something outdoors. I lo love to be outdoors, but I've been writing thank you letters to all my band and crew all week. I'm Sixty deep so far. Wow. My right hand is not really functioning that well at this point. It's not used to writing letters. But let me ask you this. Writer. Get a typewriter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type. That's still cool. Yeah. So 20-year-old bourbon. Just because it's 20 years old, some would say the best stuff's between 6 and 8 years. I would, yeah. 6 yeah. and 12 is usually where the best the sweet right. spot is. So is this just having to be monitored every... Yeah. Year. Yeah. I mean, uh, oak can turn this um, after 12 years old. The clock is ticking yeah. on whether it'll be over oaked. But what Michter's does that makes them really well suited to age their whiskeys for a long time is they're going into the barrel at a very low proof. They're going in at 103 right, proof. Right, the water in. And that makes it, um, you know, less astringent. When it's coming out, so there's not as much alcohol to extract yeah. uh, the tannins, and so it's more soluble to interact with the wood. 
and um, and so it can rest in the wood for longer periods. That's theory. You know, it's not exactly proven fact. Also, but yeah, is it putting in a lower proof? The water extracts more polymers from the wood as wood sugars. Is yeah, that a thing ba- too? basically, it extracts less of the polyphenols yeah. that uh, that are that are basically the taste of wood. Yeah, it extracts less of With that. With more water. Yes. Uh, the higher you go up in proof, the more it'll, sh- it'll extract. It. But it's not, it's not... It's not... That is so good. It's not always the case. So that's why I say it's it's more theory than uh, proven science. <sighs> that's... I'm, yeah, uh, that's something to hold on to right there. I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm like, yeah, like breaking too, this... I'm too. Breaking this it, down. This, this, is the, this is the one for today with the weather and the... And the, the music <laughs> and the setting. It's, maybe it's the one for every day, but it definitely fits this vibe perfectly. I mean, this is uh, batch number 2211-2515. Mictors, Bottle 461. Yeah. You know, for a second, I got nervous of you palming that, bringing it over there because it was off the table. I know. You know, I've had guests here in Nashville drop their bottles and I'm glasses. Sure. No. Preston from Low Cash. Oh, God. That boy dropped a few things. I didn't realize you had that many connections to the country music. All the oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I love so Preston. Great. Both those guys are great guys. They're, they're hard great. They were up for a CMA this year. They worked year. hard. Um, First time I saw them play in your home state, Oklahoma, they were DJing a country festival out there. And mm. that's probably 2004 or five. And they're like the... They're hosting the show and so funny and so good at doing, but also playing some of their, their tunes in between. Yeah, and I just remember going, these guys hustle. These guys are what it's all about. I mean, that's what you got to got to got to want it. Well, country country fascinates me from the songwriting perspective because, like, it's 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 the only it's the only genre where feelings and stuff are really accepted. Yeah. Um. Like, you know, death is talked about regularly. Uh, cheating is regularly, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it happens every now and then, but it's usually... And the other genres that I really pay attention to, rage, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rage, and it, it's like... Yeah. It takes on social issues. You know, country doesn't take on social issues. It takes on pers- interpersonal feelings. So I like talking to songwriters. Yeah. Because songwriters, um, and really musicians, can connect this yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah. And so that's one of the big reasons why I love interviewing musicians. Well, um, I've, you know, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I've listened to a lot of the, the, the shows you've done. The one with Peyton Manning was great, talking about Sweetens Cove. And I, 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 you know, Peyton's a buddy of mine, and I, I loved how you connected football to, you know, to, to his enterprises and whatnot. But I will say, country music and, and bourbon, and just the, his, the way bourbon's made r- reminds a lot of country music because there's traditional country music like George Jones, the way yeah. he worked with Billy Sherrill. In yeah. the studio, you know the way those guys made records is you went in, like uh, like Frank Sinatra did, and you got everyone better do it just right, or else you got to do the takeover again. You know if 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 the trumpet player sneezes in the middle of Frank Sinatra's vocals, well, we got to do the whole takeover again. It might take actually some of those live recordings with, with Frank. You hear him say, "Someone goes take 46," you know, because everyone's got to get it right. That reminds me of like a single barrel, right? It's like you got to this is it. This is the one shot at it. It's going to be good or not. Then you also got modern country music that's not even, a lot of these guys aren't recording them in a studio, they're being done in someone's bedroom and it's tracks and it's, but the end result is still a great song that people love. And there's a lot of that going on here. You got stuff that's, you got, we got this mictus, it's like, you know, old school and you know, just, and then you got some of the new start, we don't have any of that stuff here, but I've heard you talk about, you know, the, the guys that are doing the, the finishing casks and yeah. the, the toasted barrels and playing with the modern technology to, still you know create a great result that people love and just a matter of how interested you are in the way it was made and created and so there's a lot of a lot of analogies between like the way country music is made and the way bourbon is is made as well i think and yet you're the only musician to successfully get bourbon in a song well we got two now we got back to bourbon it's gonna be the next one big hit oh started right here when we, oh. we said that, that's right, right that's back right to bourbon. that's right let's get back to bourbon uh, we've got another one here to taste. This is another um, A-lister. Is These the are our Parkers. The Parkers Heritage. Yeah. This is their their uh, 2000. Heaven uh, Hill. 
That's right, Heaven Hill. This is their 2022 release. This is a double barrel blend. It's a blend, uh, a composite of uh, composite of 13 year and 15 year uh, <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> that's crazy. That's and so crazy. Know, I mean, is there? A, yeah, that's just crazy. Oh, go ahead. I uh, just you know you take something that old and start messing around with it. It's just like it's such a risk, but. Well, we'll I guess find you, out. I guess the, you know it's not like you're putting in a uh, you know sherry cask and just playing that game, but you're still just right. on its own. It's probably pretty good. Do you have an empty glass? Else. I see water in that one. Do you have uh, an extra one? Right here. Oh, oh, it's got water in it. So, a little bit about the man that this is named after, Parker Beam. He was a mentor of mine. He was the man. And a very good friend. He died of ALS. Yeah. And um, they they give uh, a portion of their proceeds from this bottling yeah. to the ALS Foundation. Were you all pretty close? We were, and I spent time with him when um, when he was like getting on his bike and couldn't talk anymore, and his you know um, he was uh, he would still try to move cattle, but he couldn't. Yeah, you know but he was the master distiller there for over half a century, right? He was, yeah, not quite Late a half a century. Fifties to. No, not no. That's uh, you're thinking of Jimmy Russell, who's still no, Wild still, Turkey, still yeah. kicking. No, no. How, how old was Parker? So Parker Parker died in his 70s, but he he took over the reins probably late 70s, early 80s from his dad. I don't remember yeah. the exact year, uh, but he he basically relinquished the uh, master distiller role in um, 2012, yeah. 13. So almost half a, I mean, almost yeah. 50 well, yeah, years. Yeah, almost half a century. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. 50 years. Yeah, half a yeah. century. Yeah. What's the proof on this? 132.2. It feels like it. That's the first thing I noticed. It's just hot. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a fan. Mm. Might need to come back to this one. Okay. And we got a, we got one more to uh -oh, taste. Uh-oh, folks. Are you good for another one? Oh, yeah. All right. Come on. Colorado one. Yeah, the 291. Colorado Springs? Yep, Colorado Springs. Oh, we're gonna come back to. The, I'm following your lead, so we're gonna come back to the. We're gonna come back to. I gotta get you. A, gotta get you a fresh glass. Yeah, so. we'll just. I'll make. One I want to make sure that I'm not. Um, yeah. Uh, my palate's not like overwhelmed by the this last. A, oh, that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, I I feel. Can you give me? A, I'm hoping you get a good, they get a good review or they get a sh fair shake at it. It's like when you turn an album in and someone records it for a or critiques it for a, a newspaper or something. You're like, God, I hope they're having a good day when they listen to my record. You've got a new uh, song on the radio in gold. New song out, yeah. Called Gold and. Uh, How does the radio world work now with all the streams? Just payola, just money, just pay them off. Really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> well, hello. And that, and that how you you do, heard it here first. And that how you do? And that how you do your reviews? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm kidding. No, it's uh, radio's great, man. Country radio. I still the truck I drove here today. You know, I got a ten year old Tahoe and. I just listen to the radio. I don't. I have six buttons on there, and and that's uh, AM FM. AM FM. My first choice is always 650 AM, which is the greatest radio station ever created here in Nashville. It's a 50,000 watt uh, antenna that reaches all through Kentucky. And ooh, look, here we go. Colorado whiskey uh, finished with Aspen staves. But you go ahead and talk. Oh, finish. Okay, we got a little, some a little yeah. something special here, huh? Yeah. I want to hear what your thoughts on that. Um, no, I just, so radio, you know, you, it's, it requires a great team of people working with, you know, work with people that can help get the song in, in people's, on their desk, just like you, it's the same thing, you have all this bourbon in front of you, and you're trying to sort through it and figure out which one you like, which one you don't, and it helps to have someone, I'm sure there's a rep or someone sending you this going, hey, will you check out our 291, you know, our 291 mm -hmm. that you think, hey, check out this new bottle of, you know, Leopold Bros, and, and, uh, it's the same thing in, in uh, in uh, country music, just I have a great record label in Capitol Records. They go out there and they—they're a big deal. Yeah, they go out there and, and just get the music, get someone to listen to your music, get a program director to listen to it and give it a shot. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good the song is, it doesn't matter how good the the, the whiskey is. You gotta, you like you just said, you have a hundred thousand 
different samples you've been sent. And it's like someone has to be there kind of sure. in your ear going, hey, just will you just check this one out real quick to see what you think? So is the, is the, has the, where, where is the, the balance between streaming and radio of what's more important for an artist? For me, radio has been like the lifeblood of my career. For these younger kids out there, it's all streaming. Yeah. Like, a, like a Kane Brown, Jelly Roll. I mean, the kids are finding the music. They're going to find it. Radio is too slow for them. They want, you know, I got kids. And like the, the TikTok mentality, you know, it's like, what do you have for me now? Next. Right. Six seconds is too long. I need the next thing. So the idea that you'd have one song to listen to for, sometimes it takes a year for your song to go up the charts. So the idea that these younger kids are going to be like satisfied having one song to listen to for, you know, 40 weeks is not not, not realistic. So it's all about streaming right now. And you're yeah. making records. You're making records for yourself. No one's really actually buying physical records, but I make records because it matter, means something to me. I want to walk yeah. in my house and or wherever the record's going to be when I'm done with it and be like, that's like a book. That's like this book right here. Like it has chapters, has a story, has right. a theme. I put my heart into it. It represents that period of my life. And yeah, maybe no one's going to really buy it. They're going to get the digital version of it or for your case, Kindle or something. But I know for me, it, it means something to me because albums matter to me. I grew up on albums. This is personal as opposed to commercial. Right. You're not making any money off it. You make money off touring. You don't, make yeah. a, you don't make a dime off an album. I don't. Definitely not streaming. Uh, yeah, no, streaming's for the record label. They, that's, they're happy about that. I make money off of where the rubber meets the road. Anyway, this is a cool bottle. I like the, like the design. This is the 291 um, XI. Fred's going to tell us how he feels about those Aspen staves. Yeah, the, the stay finish. So, like, they're not la they're not labeling it bourbon. They're labeling it whiskey. So Which you you like that? I like that. Protecting a, bourbon, bourbon. Yeah, it protects the like the the category. So May I fourth nineteen May fourth nineteen sixty four. Is that the? Uh, God. Damn. <laughs> is that <It's> the? Man. <laughs> that's an important day in history, right? Yes, sir. It's when bourbon became a unique product in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so nose wise. Mm. Kind of reminds me of a lumber yard on the nose. God, there's a there's well like new wood. Yeah. Did I get that? Is it yeah. the new yeah? Yeah. I, oh, I, on I, the palate. I hit mm. that. I like that. I like it a lot too. Kinda got like a Oatmeal and brown sugar and you no. Know, on that point, you and the you and the bourbon pursuit boys were talking about. It's hard to you know hard to put it all in one category. It's almost like Olympic swimming where there's different you know events and different things right. to categorize who's first, who's getting second. And like, these bottles that have the these brands that have a little bit of the the finishing stuff is uh, it's unique, but it's really good. Yeah, it it is. I just I, I want the labeling to be right. Yeah, I get you know? that. Do you taste aspen? You smell aspen? I I, uh, I get a, I I get wood. Wood, yeah. You I do. I, yeah, you I sure, get like. You sure would have met that on the show here? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely get some wood. Yeah, I yeah. But it's I like it, wood. It's um. This is really good. It is, but I wanted to taste. I wanted to taste something. Uh oh. Af after. Mm. Uh, after tasting the Parker's Heritage. Because you know you you had you know you talked about someone like telling you that uh, oh yeah the someone told me at Heaven Hill like this is the best Parker's Heritage they put out so that's out. in your ear yeah so you're thinking that I've been and excited it, to drink it because I'm just a fan of and that was a good really good friend of mine uh oh really so really good friend a good of shot. mine we'll finish so it so I wanna I wanna go back to yeah, it yeah after tasting I just wanna make sure my palate wasn't yeah. shocked after the twenty year old and after this is, tasting this is that really great then what's not. this go for uh, the two nine one uh, uh, yeah this. Well, 80, this but this 60? is a this is a limited edition okay. release. Okay, oh, never mind. Uh, so this is uh, one fifty. I'm an idiot. Sorry, folks. Don't listen to me. You know these guy, the guy behind. They're this, not sending you the. Yeah, they're not going to send Fred Minnick the. Uh, well, stuff they send, off the shelf. They send me all kinds of Kroger. stuff. Yeah. But the guy behind this is a September 11th survivor. Oh, really? A fashion photographer, and he retired. Well, I was just up there. Fashion photography. And got into um, 
got into you say September 11th. He was in. He was in 9/11. He was in New York. Yeah, his yeah. his apartment was a part of the backblast. Wow. And like the there's video footage of his apartment getting ransacked. No. Quick shout out to the uh, Tunnel to Towers group that I just performed. Oh wow. For uh, this year and and uh, uh, Frank uh, Ziller and his whole team up there. It's such an emotional day. All the firefighters come down wearing a full uh, picture of a firefighter that died that day. There's I think there's 360 firefighters that and first responders that died instantaneously. Of course, more died over the course of the next few weeks and months. But really special group of people, the, the Tower to Tunnels Cheers people. To so them, man. here's the NYFD and PD and all the all the and the folks that, you know, have continued from that the wars, ensuing wars, uh, made sacrifices for us. Our country's been through a lot. Yeah. In the last 30 years. For me, it started with the Oklahoma City bombing. Of course. Are you, yeah. by the way, are you in the, back in the Parkers? Or I'm you? back to the Parkers. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go back to the Parkers. I can, by the, I can have conversation and still be critic. So, like, if you want me to not have a conversation and just get to the whiskey. No, no, no. I want to talk. I want to do all what right. you're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. Going deep. This is what bourbon's all about. Absolutely. Talking about heavy shit. Yeah, and heavy this, shit, but also. This is not vodka conversation. Uh, no, by God. <laughs> it, but it's also, it's all, it's cordial, right? It's yeah. cordial. Yeah. And I've always believed that if, if two people who are uh, opposed to one another could have a drink together. The Bourbon Summit, folks, was the uh, was the alleged meeting of who was that? Uh, McConnell, McConnell and Obama. And, yeah. Yeah, it happened. About the last time they got together. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. No one gets together anymore. You know, no. God, they Good don't. God, they hate each no other. No one says the gentleman across the aisle. You know, when they used to get in an argument, they'd say, "Well, I disagree with the gentleman from West Virginia." You know, yeah. no one, no one says that anymore. It's, yeah, I remember Bush giving, making sure everyone had a standing ovation for Pelosi when she became Madam Speaker. Really? Yeah, it was a big thing. Ta- he was like telling the story of how she came up. And how uh, her uh, dad would be so proud. Really? And um, it was it was weird. You would not see it in today's world. No. I remember John McCain. I'm from Arizona, and I love John McCain. He's a great man, war hero, and just one of the greatest. But he, uh, I remember he was in a town council meeting, uh, town, town hall meeting, and some lady goes, now, Obama, he's a, uh, he's a Muslim, and he's gonna, you know, a terrorist. And he's like, took the microphone. He's like, no, no, ma'am, ma'am. He's a nice family guy. He's, we just have big differences on the way the country should be run, but he just he corrected. He was like, "Now I'd be yeah. like, you're right, yeah. <laughs> vote for me." <laughs> but I'm I'm a fierce independent, so no no judgment. Don't don't try to pin- pigeonhole me. Same just here. Just like my music, I don't like to be put on one I, side or the other. Well, one thing you do in your music is talk about drinking a lot. Yeah, so I do. Here we're we we're, do we're doing that effectively. having a hard time with this dirt oh no i'm feeling your i'm, I'm worried about your buddy yeah, well <laughs> there may be a few less uh things under the christmas tree this year <laughs> uh, oh they got a few of these right they got a, a mash the wheat they got a yeah this is it, it's not even it's not even like over oak to me it's a, it's like incomplete is there something missing on the on the on the finish or just in the overall so, taste? I like for, I like for something to encompass my tongue. Like to like, like that first, like the, uh, Elijah Craig did. Oh yeah. my God. And by the way, same company. I know. I know. So I like for it. Uh, I like to feel it on the tip and all the way in the back yeah. underneath. And this one is spotty at best. Um, let me get a big old, in a yeah. big old Kentucky chaw here. Yeah, it's not, it's not doing it for me. Yeah. But if you like it, well, you like it. I'm not. I hate to chime in because there's, you know, this is reputations at stake, and there's no novice, novice like me. Should no, be get on here. it. It's get so on funny. it. I will. Say, well, I just, I do. I'm missing some like. If it's supposed to make my mouth explode and do all the right under the tongue and all that yeah. kind of stuff, I'm yeah. not feeling that. I don't know. That's a what's the uh, what's you know the proof on that? This is 132. Yeah, so I'm not feeling that, but 
It doesn't. It doesn't feel like super hot. No, I will no. say that. Yeah. Also, it's not bad. No, it's good. It's not bad. It, yeah. It, it for, for the record, it is good. It yeah, is not living good. up to my expectation. You, yeah. Of what this brand is. Yeah. And uh, Parker Beam, you know, is the shit. He was the shit. Yeah. And like and like, so maybe I come into this having a very yeah high. It's funny opinion. how that can that, how that yeah. can affect it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I also didn't like their 27 year. I didn't like their 24 year. I mean, I've is there I've not ever, like music like like Taylor Swift's new album just came out. You know, when I, when I first well, heard, I, I all respect to her, but I have not listened to it. <laughs> well, I got three daughters, and, or two daughters, and you don't my have a wife, choice. So we, I mean, I'm a huge fan of her. She's so, all, do you, are you able to get tickets to her show, or are you stuck on Ticketmaster like everyone else? I uh, my kids just asked me today in the car. We get now we getting tickets to the, she's playing the stadium here. I'm working on it just like everybody else. I'm working on. it. I know her manager and. And I talked to her about it, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll get my own tickets. I'm just kind of like, that's the way yeah. I roll. But uh, Taylor's been nothing but so awesome. I mean, we actually sang together in Kansas City on her 1989 tour. And I, you know, true artists, when they put out an album, like you too, the first time you listen to the new, you're like, I don't know. It's like, it's not like the last one. It sounds different. I like the last one. It takes right. a while to adjust to it. Right. Same with this album. You know, it's like, this is not what our last albums have sounded like at all, which were a little more like kind of folk rock, I guess. But this one just, I liked it to begin with, but the more I listen to it, because we listen to it a lot, it just right. it grows. Has that ever happened to you with, like, for example, uh, no, like a, you know, in a tasting? Yeah, you go yeah. back taste it the next day, or yeah, there's you think been, about yeah. it overnight, you're like, you know, I, you know, I don't know, you know give another so, shot. So a couple, couple of thoughts to that. Like, one, music can grow on you, right? Uh, that's happened to me a lot, um, with, especially when I've, with the musicians I've interviewed. So you first listen to my music, you're like, oh, it's terrible, but I got to interview this guy. So you kept uh, no, listening no, to it. No, you kept no, listening no. to it. Like, it's okay. It's okay. No, I, no, it's I've like, loved your stuff. No, <laughs> I mean, come on. Talking about drinking on an airplane? Come on now. Uh, but uh, that that is, to me, like music is, uh, you can talk yourself into liking a song. Mm. Um, like Baby Shark is a good example. God, Baby Shark. Oh, don't even get me started. Like, on that I one. can't even imagine my life without that song now <laughs> because, like, it, yeah. you know, helped raise it, you know, a kid or yeah, two, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. or in the process of it. Uh, but, like, if I had heard it before, like, I hated it, but it, it, I got warm to it because it kept my child, you know, still. Yeah, how old's your kid, that kid? Uh, that one's four. Wow, dude, you got your hands full. Four year Yeah, old. yeah, he's, he's good now, though, I think. It's funny. Anyway, four year olds is a great age. One of my favorite ages. It's a great age. The other one's uh, eight. So good ages right now. That's fun. But the uh, but the big thing. I'm to gonna that, go back to our original. Yeah, back to the whiskey. I want to go back. No, I want to go back to the original bottle while you're talking. I'm gonna go back to a. Absolutely. This Elijah Craig. Feel free to barrel. more of that if yeah, you want to. Yeah. Well, that's so nice of you. These two are going home with me. I, I really appreciate <laughs> that, Fred. <laughs> uh, I think that one might just be in a little taste off later on. Okay, I don't know. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, but. I I used to do a technique where I would taste three times before giving my rating. But three I, different I, days? Yeah, three different yeah, days. Yeah. So you I would make sure my now. mood. I don't have time. No, there's no way you can do that. I, I can't do you it. You don't have the liver capacity for that, probably. No. Well, I, I don't normally. No, you don't drink that much, yeah. But don't normally drink like this. No. But, uh, uh, By the way, this kind of drinking is so fun because this is not how I have typically drank the majority no. of my career. When we had a Jägermeister machine yeah. on the tour bus, <laughs> we were not sitting around going, mm, smell the caramel flavors of this like, chilled Jägermeister. And, like, it was like, how many you can throw back before you walk on stage? Uh, Luckily, a lot of my, my, my career, a lot of it occurred before the iPhone. Yeah. Because there's definitely some shows where the show ended because I was done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> lying down. Like, oh, I guess, I guess that's the show's over because wow. he's not moving. Touring with a band called Cross Canadian Ragweed, Oklahoma oh. band. Those guys. Stillwater. I saw. I saw them in college. Yeah, those those are my good buddies. Cody. Um, actually, Cody's son is named Dirk. So only Dirk's out there. But um, those guys really, they hurt me. They hurt me. We first started touring together. Put a show at a Helotes County store, and they walked on the bus and put a big bottle of Jägermeister on the bus. And I remember going, Jägermeister. That was like back in like sophomore. No one drinks Jägermeister anymore. Right. It was like we drank that in high school. Oh no, we drank a lot of Jägermeister over the two years we toured together. But he, but uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed used to see them at the uh, Mike's College Bar mm. all the time. Stillwater. Yeah, yeah Mike. Good. Mike McClure. Yeah. Great, 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 red, great dirt, red dirt music right there. Yeah. 
Ragweed's uh, those guys, Cross Canadian Ragweed, Randy Rogers Band. They're all these younger kids, all you know, discovering them and or paying them the respect, you know. Yeah. Parker McCollum's got Randy out there in the road with them. Pat Green, that whole group. It's fun to see those guys getting a little. That's awesome. Yeah. So I do get. Uh, I will go back to a whiskey that I didn't think I liked, or I had like a bad nose. I want to you it to or get these guys like in their try. I'm worried about your friendship. So yeah, well, um, the friendship that you know, it's, <laughs> it's happened. It's happened before. <laughs> Take that back to back home and and uh, give that another shot. It's going to give it one more taste here to make sure I'm just not off kilter. I mean, while you're thinking while you're thinking about that, I'll just say uh, for for me. I mean, is it unsurprising that these two are my favorite or no? Yeah. No. Is that like a all. young palate to, to think yeah. that or no? No. I, I, and, and the thing is, too, is. It's pretty you, kind of predictable. I'm talking you, about well, the. Well, I, I don't know if that's the case. The Nicters and the. Uh, Elijah I, think, I think you would. I think you would like be honest if you didn't like something. I would be. Yeah. Was there anything on but the I, table I, you didn't like? No, no. I liked them all. It'd be hard for me to really. You weren't. You weren't feeling Leopold Brothers. Because you 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 were saying like I don't understand it it's not my jam I don't do the rye not totally just I'm not a huge I'm not I, but I I would put that back on me as as my palate not being totally and the more I drink it's just different you know it's just different some people are rye people some people aren't I well mean, I, and I broke it down as like a very old school rye yes. where, whereas this one the other rye the sweet mash yeah. rye from Hard Truth yeah it was your egg you yeah like, well, it's, you like great yeah, yeah yeah this is more. Again, I would uh, I would hate for someone to be have any sort of opinion based off what I'm what I think. I'm especially these being Colorado guys. I got to give them some love. There, it's a it's a that's a, a good thing. And it's I love the label of the bottle and I love the juice. I just uh, it's something I want to spend more time with, you know. And I, I probably will. I think I, will, I probably will go buy a bottle of this and just see if like you know how that sits over time with me. So all right, but I loved it all, man. It was is this it? Are we done? I don't think so. Okay, well, okay, I mean, yeah. well, in terms of well, in terms Look of like scatter uh, here, I love this. You want you want another pour want of the mixers? One more mixers, just to see. I'm gonna have a little more mixers. Yeah, why wouldn't we? I I will say, I will taste this again, but good. But right now it's yeah, it's in the doghouse. That's a tough. That, you got a tough job having to do that. I'm, yeah. That would, there you go. Okay, this is my two right here. I'm getting confused on what's what. But we can. Uh, I guess we can like, you know, wrap up the interview yeah. and then we, we keep doing well, our thing. Here. Like, I, like I said at the start of the, the show, huge fan. I don't do a lot of podcasts. Uh, this one's so fun because we're talking about something that we're that I'm super passionate about, and obviously get a chance to hang out with the, the most knowledgeable person in the room about it. And uh, had a great time. I love everything you do. Appreciate all the well, I've learned appreciate from you. That. And I, I love, love you're a great podcast. You're you're knowledgeable, but you're really funny. Your your shows are your uh, your shows always makes me laugh. Well, I appreciate that. Support. We're we're going to have a follow up coming up because you got a new album coming out here in uh, in a couple weeks. Want to come up month? there and do it uh, with you? Want to come into the the mothership? You want to come in the house? Want to come in the or house come, or come to the office? Yeah, okay. I'll fly up there, but I probably won't fly home. Okay. <laughs> it's so so I'll get, you, I'll get some else to fly me back. <laughs> so you would fly the, uh, you, the FA. Your dad would probably tell you the FA frowns upon that. They do. E- even the autopilot is amazing. They're not big on. Uh, Having a few drinks and fly. So you'd fly into Bowman Field. I fly right, yeah, fly into a, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, come. Are you closer to the Louisville or Bardstown? Uh, Louisville. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that's about a, that's about a 35-minute flight in my little prop plane. Wow. Hmm. That's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I'm just gonna pour. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna pour yeah. it in my pocket. Take, take it home with me. Put the whole, uh, the whole drum right here. Just okay. I love it. Okay, there we go. It's a good look. <laughs> Actually, I have a friend who has a uh, lanyard that will hold a Glen Karen. Really? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, you know, I think I played your festival a long time ago. Oh, Bourbon and Beyond yeah. or Hometown Rising? Bourbon, Bourbon and Beyond. And Beyond? Yeah. yeah. It was back, and I really wasn't appreciative of. of Good bourbon. Yeah. I remember I did a meet and greet and was handed a lot of great bottles of bourbon. Yeah. And I handed them all out to my crew guys, my band guys. And like, I'm just not who I was at the time. I was really more of just a bush light beer drinker. And Jim Beam was good enough for me at the time. And, and now I'm like, hey, Jim God, Beam's still great. Jim Beam is great. I mean, but I'm like, it's great. Oh, I probably got some good stuff. So I got to come back again and play that. 
love to have you but man just it's great to have you on mm. uh more importantly the friendship i'm excited yeah, to, to where, where it's going it's and, great to meet you in person I'm yeah lazy. watched and, a lot of a lot of your show and i've listened to you so well, much it's no, good to, it's, it's growing good to, on you like you said you didn't voice. like it at first but the music's growing did not say that <laughs> did not say that but i i will say that i i i, I said at the top you're the only musician to properly use bourbon my only in one a song there's not bourbon yeah. is not used that and i and i've talked to several songwriters about yeah. this yeah uh, whiskey uh, is such an easy rhyme yeah there's that's so many e it. rhymes so I, talk, I talked to uh, uh, Jesse Alexander about this. I talked to uh, Nick Wayne about this. I talked to uh, uh, he won the um, he won American Idol. Okay, I'm having a he's in country. He's a music Nick. W- oh, oh, uh, American uh, Idol country guy. It's killing me. I can't remember. His not name. a lot of the oh Scotty McCreary. No, and that's not drink, does he? No, it's God. I hope I'm drawing a blank. This is embarrassing. Recently. In the last five Carmichael? years. Carmichael? Not Carmichael. No. I, I don't even know if he was on, even on there. I was just trying to think. Uh, yeah. Wait, you know what? The guy that won American Idol. He uh, won it. He won it. He actually won it. Yeah. How many years ago? I think it was within the last five years. Right. This country guy. We're going to look it up right now. It's we will edit this. Technology is amazing, y'all. <laughs> we'll edit this. So. List of recent American Idol winners. Trent Harmon. Trent Harmon. Trent Harmon. Okay. It was Trent, Trent Harmon. It was Trent Harmon. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. So I Trent mean, Harmon was saying that you can't really rhyme bourbon. He was, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So so it, it does come down to the rhymes. Bourbon. Get some. Gonna drink some bourbon. I'm gonna get some. Fred Minuck. You, you, <laughs> you have to really. You have to work pretty hard at it. Yeah. Yeah. They've been. They've been it pretty good. You know, speaking about purists versus like the new culture. You write, you write with Tom Douglas. Tom Douglas, it has to be a perfect rhyme. You write with Tom. You, it, it's, you can't rhyme the word paint and can't. Even though you can turn can't into can't, and you can make paint fit with can't, mm-hmm. like Brooks and Dunn did with, like, I can ride rope, hammer and paint, do things with my hands that most men can't. Yeah. Tom Douglas would be like, no. It's got to be a perfect rhyme. We're better than that. We can, we, we are better, we can rise above that. We can that. get there. We're, we're better than that. Yeah. Take the time. Get it right. That would be your single barrel, you know. Oof. And then you got the younger guys that are like, like me, free and easy down the road I go. It's there's, there's even there's some, even one point in that song where I, I rhyme the word go with go. That's the go 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 go, go, go. girls. That, that's a band back in the day. I ran out of go rhymes and I was like, I guess we could use the word go twice. But yeah, there's different ways of uh, of getting around it. But. Well, man. To the next time. Yep. To the Great truth. having you on. Vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. I learned. The, I learned that lesson. I love this shit, man. This <laughs> is great. Mm. Mm. That's that's the best. That's the Lord right there that talking. Good, yeah. That's the Lord talking that's in your soul. One. God, that's good. With whiskey. That might be sacrilegious, but I'm. You know. <laughs> hey, if, if, he, if there's a reason why the yeast. Uh, grapes have the you know yeast on their skins. It's obviously it was meant to be, yeah, meant to be fermented. Hey, that's well, uh, Twain. Yeah. yeah, and you Let's used go, to girl. you used to be in the uh, intern for the CMAs, like carrying I, her stuff I used to, around. I used so. to I walked her around one time. It was the highlight of my career at that point. <laughs> She's doing the midriff, and I was a little headset microphone. Let her back to her. Let Shania Twain back to her bus, and I thought I'm You've really living it. now. Yeah, and now here you are, slumming yeah. with me. No, this is it's always fun to be in here. This place is usually crazy. I don't come in here at night because it's just it's a you know, the, the girls here, the waitresses that work here. You'd get here. mauled, wouldn't you? Well, it's people are dan- these are all road plates, so people are dancing on these tables and the people up on shoulders, and yeah, and it's pretty wild. Um, but this building used to, like we were talking about earlier, used to be an old guitar, guitar shop. I used to come in here and buy guitar or not buy guitars, pull a guitar down off the shelf, play for a little bit, and put it back up on the shelf. So it's always special to be in here. Yep. Well, thanks for coming right. on, brother. Thanks, dude. Look forward this to seeing your a, spot. We'll see you again in uh, a few weeks. Whiskey this good. You just keep cheering. Don't, don't well, you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>